Hare right, Krishna, dear devotees, happy Ram Nomi, and welcome back to the GBC SBT page. My name is Deva Madhava Das, and I'm very happy to have with us today His Grace Nityananda Pran Prabhu. Welcome to the page, Prabhu, my obeisances. Please accept my humble obeisance to Deva Madhava Prabhu. I'm really excited to have this uh, unabashed opportunity to glorify you a little bit. <laughs> and you have to sit and take it. I'm, I'm, uh, had the privilege of knowing Nityananda Pran Prabhu. He's kind of my uh, devotional community neighbor over in Chicago, and I'm here in uh, the Detroit, Michigan area. And over the years, we've crossed paths through just association, but also some service. And I've always been very moved by the gentlemanly way that Nityananda Pran Prabhu has carried himself, even in tense situations, which we all know come about even in our devotee society. The Ramayana is a good example of that also, even though the Lord is there, he's not able to avoid tense situations. And yet Nityananda Pran Prabhu, in my experience, carries himself with grace and comport and the kind of uh, behavior that we would want and expect to see in devotees. And so I'm very happy that we all have the chance to hear from him today about the example of Lord Ramchandra, who is famous for his maryada, the way that he carries himself. So Prabhu, thank you so much for joining the page and we'll turn it over to you now. I'll escape before you can try to rebuttal in any way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, even if I can't see you, Deva Madhava Prabhu, uh, I can express my heart that yes, we are neighbors, <clears throat> and we have crossed paths, and you can see the gentlemanly <clears throat> uh, side of me, or if you, that's what you think is there, it's because you are such a person who brings out even the good in some, not so necessarily uh, such a person. And uh, I take it as a great honor uh, that you're introducing me today to this event because I hold you in very high regard as a friend, as a leader uh, of the ISKCON community and someone that I know that uh, my son looks up to as, as someone that he appreciates very much uh, and so does my entire family, my wife, myself. Uh, you have one unique ability that uh, you can interact with and engage different different kinds of people in Krishna's service, which is also in the spirit of uh, the Ramayana. Hare so Krishna. thank you for inviting me. I am very grateful to the GBC SPT team for uh, inviting me and uh, giving me a fantastic opportunity to speak on Sri Ramana media. I mean, I couldn't think of anything uh, better. Uh, for this day to do to be with the devotees and, and share something that I've been studying for a, a little over four years, uh, the Valmiki Ramayana, specifically in Sanskrit. And I, I don't know Sanskrit, and by Prabhupada's grace, uh, whatever I can recognize, certain words uh, have given me great uh, joy in studying and absorbing myself in uh, the Ramayana. The, the trick is to actually be able to follow it and uh, I see that, uh, you know, it's a, it's a very tall uh, order uh, that I hope to uh, move on, or move towards uh, in this lifetime and uh, other lifetimes if the opportunity is offered. Um, so I can start with invocation. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyanam Jana Shalakaya Chakshur Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamahim Dadati Sva Padantikam Vancha Kalpaturubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Maha Nama Om Vishnupadaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nidinamine Namaste Sarasate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashtya Yeshatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shriva Sadi Gaura Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So the topic of my presentation is uh, leadership. It actually is action, not necessarily only a position. And the question that, that I've raised is if Ramarajya is possible again. 
And uh, what happened is, uh, since I was invited and I was asked to speak on Ramayana as it relates to leadership, I said, I'll take any opportunity and leadership is probably entwined into the presentation, but I also want an unabashed opportunity to glorify Sri Ramachandra and his devotees. So I leave it to you, to the audience, to pick up items of leadership. Of course, I will point to them as well, but uh, this is pretty much a, a meditation on Sri Ramachandra and his fascinating qualities. Although we will start with uh, Bhakta Donald McCannon, he is a uh, broadcast industry executive who actually had uh, made this statement that leadership is action, not a position. So often in our lives, we see that there are many leaders in this world. Uh, and then leadership is across any unit of people, whether it's a family, uh, a broader family, a community, uh, congregation, uh, nation and anything in between. And uh, most times, because of certain positions, certain people get, get the glory of uh, the position. However, leadership is not the glory of the position, but the position gets its glory because of such a person, a fit, able, and uh, cultured person. So Sri Ramachandra is such a person who gives the very word leadership full grace and and its um, its mighty position there are many leaders in this world who some of them take their followers backwards they're very regressive thoughts there are some leaders who take their followers forward sri ramachandra is one personality as a leader who by his qualities and behavior took all his followers upward. So as a spiritual society, our leadership is that which should take us upwards. So the shining example is Srila Prabhupada, who not only made his followers progressive, and someone might argue whether it was progressive or not, because it's rooted in tradition, regardless, it is progressive, it's progressive in consciousness and ideally upwards. Uh, so that's a great leader. With that, uh, before we dwell into uh, what the Ramayana has to say, it's important to uh, recite some invocation, seeking the mercy of the worshipable Lord, his consort and his associates. So these are a couple of verses from the work called Rama Raksha Stotra. They're in Sanskrit, and I'll explain it in English uh, for some of us who may not uh, necessarily uh, know it. The, the, the first verse is Dakshine Lakshmano Yasya Vamecha Janakat Maja Purato Marutir Yasya Tamvande Ragunandanam. I offer my obeisances to Ragunandana, the descendant in the Ragu dynasty, who is meditated on or uh, visualized with Lakshmana to his right and Sita Devi, the daughter of Janaka to his left, and Hanuman, who is always in front of him uh, offering uh, prayers. To such a uh, setup of personalities, I offer my uh, respectful obeisances, or I offer my respectful obeisances to Sri Ramachandra. One of the things uh, about Sri Ramachandra and his holy name is that just by uttering his name, uh, one can see a whole bunch of spiritual benefits. So this is a poem or a verse that is full of alliteration. So there is alliteration in the words bharjanam, arjanam, tarjanam, and garjanam. So the verse says bharjanam bhavavijanam, arjanam sukha sampadam, tarjanam yamadutanam, Rama Rameti Garjanam. Wherever there is the loud roaring Garjanam of the names of Rama, 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 so iti, there uh, certain things happen. 
the seed of uh, continued birth and death, bhava bija, gets smashed. So it's called bharjanam. All, si all kinds of material and spiritual happiness and abundance, sukha sampadam, arjanam, means it takes root or it starts to sprout. And yamadutana tarjanam, the Yamadutas are cast away. Tarjana means to cast away. Simply by loudly chanting Ram Rama Iti. Then how can we discuss Ramayana without seeking mercy from Valmiki Rishi, who is the, the great, greatest poet that ever crossed this universe and is still there. And he wrote this Ramayana with full realization. So the verse is from Agastya Samhita, Valmike Munisimhasya Kavita Vanacharina Shunvan Ramakatha Nadam Konayati Paramgatim. He says, who is there such a person, Oda Yati, who will not attain the ultimate abode for a person who is in the forest of material uh, existence. So we, according to Narada Muni in Srimad Bhagavatam, we're all in the forest of material existence. And in this forest, there are some wild beasts. And especially a lion, when he roars, the strength of his roar is such that it can kill a person out of fear. And they will leave this world. So poetically, we're being told, that there is a forest of poetry, Kavita Vana, a forest of poetry. And there is a lion, Simha, his name is Valmiki. And he is prowling and wandering in this forest of poetry. And he very loudly roars. The, and his roaring is Ramakatha, the Nadam means the sound or the reverberation of Ram Katha. One who hears this will leave this world and attain the supreme abode or Ramachandra's abode. So in the forest of poetry, we hear the line Valmiki roaring Ram Katha, which will lead us out of this material world and to the spiritual world. Then a glorification of Sri Hanuman that yatra yatra ragunatha kirtanam tatra tatra kritamastakanjalim bhashpavari paripurna lotanam bhaktim namata rakshasantakam. This Maruti Hanuman, who is the killer of rakshasas, he has a particular feature that he can be fierce and kill hundreds and thousands of rakshasas. But as soon as he he hears Ramakatha. And so the verse says Yatra Yatra. In Sanskrit, Yatra means where. But when it is used twice, Yatra Yatra, it means wherever. So wherever there is a discussion of Ramakatha, Tatra Tatra, in all those places, Sri Hanuman manifests. And his manifestation is not this powerful pose or powerful presence, but in a very humble way. Krita Mastakanjalim. He bows his head or holds his hands to his head. If you look at the picture, his hands are folded at feet of Ramachandra. Krita Mastakanjalim. Bhashpabari. And his eyes are filled with tears of ecstasy. Paripurna Lochanam. Eyes are filled with tears of happiness by the wanting to hear Ramakatha. Actually, in many places, wherever Ramakatha is being spoken, they keep a seat, especially for Hanuman. And the understanding is that Hanuman definitely comes and sits there to, to listen to Ramakatha. So with that, before we discuss leadership, I thought it would be nice to appreciate why the Ramayana, why the Ramayana stands uniquely, singularly effulgent 
in the world today uh, among the followers of vedic dharma because it has everything that a person can look for and benefit from however i don't have time to get into uh, the glories of ramayana so i'll just give you a very quick highlight and deva madhav prabhu is going to ask you would you like mahaprasadam the hindu temple style or the iskon style which meant uh, hindu temple style means you get mahaprasad only enough to lick it and get a little taste and sort of be left uh, wanting for more and the iskon style is you are fed like anything still wanting more but given the time limit that we have so this probably is hindu temple style mahaprasad for the moment so i hope <laughs> it's okay i'm used to up to the neck i and know I, me too i would come to your temple the kishore kishore's prasad was famous <laughs> yes uh, there is a saying uh, in in our native town uh, if someone says have you eaten enough he says look in my eyes you can see the rice grains <laughs> <laughs> so why the ramayana is here are some things about the ramayana that it contains all the six angas of sharanagati so if someone wants to learn what is sharanagati one should study the ramayana carefully all the nine processes of bhakti are present ah huh? shravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam pada sevanam archanam vandanam dasyam sakhyam atmanivedanam they are all there completely sprinkled throughout the ramayana the 12 rasas are there in full glory i said all categories of rasas except and it's obvious the except is the parakya rasa uh, that is the mellows of conjugal love outside of marriage although from the persons who meet ramachandra there is invitation for it but ramachandra does not cross the border or the limit of swakya rasa with his own wife sita devi and he gifts them parakya rasa in their next life the sages of dandakaranya and shurpanaka for example so except for that all other rasas are there it's a very very juicy tender savory scripture generally people think of ramachandra as this very poised strict person which he is but i also like to uh, i have i've come to appreciate him as a hopeless romantic as well and there are many many such interactions with sita devi that, that identify him so and finally the 24 is that the entire gayatri mantra the brahma gayatri starting with tat savitur etc is encoded right within the ramayana there are 24 syllables for the gayatri and interestingly there are 24000 verses in the ramayana and every first verse and after that every thousandth verse begins with the next successive syllable of the gayatri for example the gayatri starts with tat savitur so the first verse of ramayana begins with tapasvadhyaya niratam and the gayatri ends with prachodayat and the very last syllable in the ramayana the 24000th verse ends also with ta and so the entire gayatri is encoded now generally for common people the gayatri is not given without qualification however great personalities like valmiki they encode the entire ramayana Uh, the gayatri into the ramayana such that by studying the ramayana all the import the grace the power the potency that is packed in the gayatri is now freely distributed to anybody the educated uneducated the civilized the uncivilized and anyone in between so that's the greatness of ramayana in a very very seed shape so coming to leadership this is a balmiki uh, this is very second verse so we will cover 2 3 and 4 verses from the very first chapter of ramayana 
where Valmiki asks Narad Muni uh, these questions. He wants to know, is there someone? Who is there? Kono Asmin. Sampatam Loke. Right now in this world, who is there? In Sanskrit, kaha means who. And nu is used as asking a question. Is there? Who is there? In this world right now, who embodies and personifies these characteristics? Gunavan, Kascha, Viryavan. So the verses go with Kaha and then the quality. So Kaha, Gunavan, Kaha, Viryavan, Kaha, Dharmascha, Dharmagya, Kaha, Kritagya, Satyavakya, Dridhavarataha. Who is there who lives in this world today, endowed with excellent qualities, prowess, righteousness, gratitude, truthfulness, and firmness in his vows? Then he says, Charitre Nachako Yuktaha, Sarvabhuti Shuko Hitaha, Vidwan Kaha, Kaha Samarthascha, Kascha Eka Priyadarshana. Who is that one gifted with good conduct, given to the well being of all living creatures, learned in the lore, basically means learned in all fields of knowledge? Who is there who is capable of doing things which others cannot do? And one who is singularly handsome. And the third verse he says, Atmavan kaha jitak krodha, dutiman kaha. Ko Anusu Yakaha, Kasya Bibhiti Devascha, Jat Roshasta Samyuge, who among men is self restrained, who has conquered anger, who is endowed with brilliance and free from envy, who is that when excited to wrath or when he is made angry, even the Devatas and others are afraid. Now, in the same verse, he asks, Who is Jitakko, the one who has overcome anger? And then he talks about Jata Roshasya Samyuge, which means anger has its place and application. But he wants to know who is such a person. Now, these are a collective of 16 qualities. Uh, and this is how I have appreciated them. And for the sake of this discussion, I've put them into four categories. The first category is Gunavan. Now, Gunavan, in general, uh, means one who has qualities. But it stands on its own. And the great Acharyas explain why it stands on its own. It is a complete uh, a quality or a set of things that covers his entire persona, makes up his persona. And then there are three categories. I've reorganized the words that Valmiki has asked into three other categories, which I call uh, character, service, and abilities. And uh, the same that he has asked are in these, but I'm going to go through each one of these categories a little bit more in detail. Again, this is completely Hindu temple prasadam style, uh, because if I get into uh, not that I have the cap capacity, but if for whatever I do, each of these qual qualities we can speak till the cows come home. But let's start with Gunavan. According to Sri Yamunacharya in his Totra Ratna, he starts glorifying the Lord as you are naturally controlled by the love of your devotees. You're generous. You are in possession of great auspicious qualities. You're straightforward, honest, pure, gentle, merciful, charming, steadfast, equal to all, blissful, wise, and saintly. And by the time he gets to this list, he realizes that I cannot keep on going on like this. So therefore, oh my Lord, you are the nectarian ocean of all transcendental auspicious qualities. And by that, he is in his mind, he has covered everything and some more. In, in the Mangalarati, we 
everyday saying kalyana gunarana vasya that he is the ocean of all auspicious qualities and yamuna charya uses similar phraseology he calls him uh, amrita dadhi kalyana guna amrita udadhi the ocean of nectarian auspicious qualities now in sanskrit when you see the suffix van it means a collection of so that's one reason for gunavan that he's a collection of a composite of and, and all sorts of qualities and interestingly those qualities don't clash with each other some people have few of these qualities some people have many but some there are there is nobody except sri ramachandra or the supreme lord who has all of these qualities in infinite quantities and never clashing with each other per se another meaning of the word gunavan according to vishwakosha dictionary is that single quality perhaps by which a person is remembered again and again and again and always so when someone thinks of sri ramachandra for each one of us there is one or there are couple of qualities that we immediately remember him by that's the meaning of the word gunavan now another meaning uh, for the word gunavan is his characteristic of saushilyam now the reason saushilyam is identified is when a valmiki is asking a question is there a person who is gunavan and then he lists these qualities so in poetry there is no room for redundancy so one might wonder why he says gunavan and then has all these qualities so there are two reasons one by saying gunavan one may think that a couple of qualities might suffice but he wants to know who is this person who has all these qualities and some more and because to avoid repetition the word gunavan actually means saushilyam saushilya sushila means very gentle and so one characteristic of ramachandra that is extolled to unlimited degree is this saushilyam as a leader very important quality saushilyam means although ramachandra is born as a prince uh, of a kingdom that that spans the entire globe and he has only lived in royal comfort yet he has friends that span across the entire gamut of existence for example he has great friendships with the sages he has great friendships with the ministers so the he has the ability saushilyam means the ability to step down and meet another person at their level it doesn't mean that he becomes one of those but he can step down from his very very great exalted position and meet with the people where they are so he meets with sages great ministers scholars his very dear friend is guha who is a tribal is a fisherman actually in that sense from occupation or from varna perspective very low yet ramchandra tells guha i consider you a friend that is equal to me atma sama sakha then he makes friendships with the uh, forest dwelling sages he makes friendships with sugriva hanuman and a whole bunch of vanaras they are all monkeys and bears but he meets with them and makes friendships with sugriva everyone else in the ramayana you'll find will offer obeisances to ramachandra only sugriva shakes hands as if he is an equal with ramachandra yet to take it even further ramachandra makes friendships with vibhishana who is a rakshasa actually the brother of his enemy although in ramachandra's heart there is no animosity 
yet vibhishna be- belongs to the enemy camp even with him ramachandra tells him i don't have we are not four brothers we are actually five brothers you are our fifth brother so this is how shilam doesn't have the arrogance of his position so when we get into his character i'm looking at the time we look when we look into his character valmiki asks dharmagya actually the word used in this shloka is dharmagya cha and the cha means dharma and everything else which means he knows what is real dharma he knows according how narad muni identifies in bhagavatam the other outbursts or upstart dharmas chala dharma upa dharma vidharma etc and he also knows what dharma is not now knowing something is one thing and living it is something else that's coming up but well, how do we know that ramachandra knows all the minute very very delicate uh, reconciliations in dharma that otherwise look as uh, very contradictory is in his speech to his mother kaushalya who tells him you should not go to the forest and he, here are all the reasons in fact lakshmana gives him raja dharma and tells him you have every right to take on the throne in fact you can even arrest dasharatha if required if you can't do it i will kill dasharatha and you be the king ramachandra gives him a whole speech on why it is right for him to follow the order of the king when kausalya says i will also come with you to the forest ramachandra forbids her saying it is right for me to go and it would be wrong for you to abandon your master and come then when sita devi wants to go there is a little debate and then she defeats him in one sense out of love but he also identifies why it would be difficult for her to go to the forest and finally a big section in the ramayana is when he kills vali and vali actually uh, tells ramachandra or shows him 13 flaws supposedly according to vali 13 flaws in ramachandra's behavior and ramachandra counteracts and responds to all those 13 items in such a fantastic way that vali offers obeisances and tells him actually it was right on your part to kill me and now please give me your blessings and he offers his obeisance to shri ramachandra another aspect of character is satyavak always speaks the truth in fact he speaks the truth to anybody he meets there is no lying ever if he meet the great sages obviously he speaks the truth when someone asks him who are you he speaks the truth even if it is a demon uh, like shurpanaka when shurpanaka comes the forest is always filled with you don't know who and shurpanaka is in disguise of a very attractive woman and they sense that this is a rakshasi and she asks him who are you and he gives his entire identification i am shri actually lakshmana speaks but ramachandra says i am son of dasharatha this is my brother lakshmana my wife sita we have been banished from ayodhya and we are living in dandakaranya generally one's identity is not easily revealed but he speaks the truth for example and there are many other such examples then vidwan now he is learned there is a famous saying in the in the circle of reciters of ramayana they say veda vedye pare pumse jate dasarathatmaje veda prachetasad asit sakshat ramayanatmanah that the ramayana is actually taking the avatar of or the vedas taking the avatar as ramayana when valmiki appearing as the composer and the supreme lord who's called vedavit as we hear in bhagavad gita chapter 15 Vedeshta Sarvair Ahameva Vedya Vedanta Krit Vedavid 
evajaham so that way that personality appears as dasharatha's son and ramachandra is so astute in his knowledge of the vedic uh, literature that he knows the vedas the upanishad the vedangas the samhitas the aranyakas all of them the puranas the stories everything in fact when he is about to leave for the forest one of dasharatha's greatest ministers uh, who was there in his uh, court by the name jabali which we famously know as prabhupad tells us that jabali was very truthful when gautam rishi asked him who's your mother and he said i don't know my just name my name is satya kama of jabali same jabali gives uh, ramachandra a whole reasoning why he should not go to the forest and when ramachandra hears that reasoning he tells jabali my dear sage you're an atheist in what you are speaking there is no vedic truth and the sister has to intervene and confirm to ramachandra no 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 he is actually not an atheist but he is speaking out of love to somehow keep you back in ayodhya he doesn't want to see you go to the forest then he is also called atmavan atmavan has many meanings this word atmavan appears in the uh, first chapter of the first verse of aranya kanda because it just entered the forest pravishya tu maharanyam dandakaranyam atmavan ramo dadarsh dudharsh tapasashrama mandalam and uh, the great acharya's comment that the word atmavan has multiple meanings one of course is that he is fearless he is situated in his spiritual position to such a degree that he is fearless so is a characteristic of a leader all these are characteristics of a good leader atmavan is fearless now fearless there are two types of persons who are fearless the great sage is fearless and a fool is also fearless and so if one might wonder oh he is fearless then we know that ramachandra is a great sage like personality because he is dharmagya satyavak and vidwan so he is not foolish so fearlessness means he is situated in the full understanding of his constitutional nature another meaning of atmavan is that he is fixed in the absolute truth uh, in bhagavatam we hear bhayam dvitiya bhineshatasyat that fear comes from the sense of a second a sense of second means something other than or someone other than krishna exists he is the absolute truth so atmavan means situated in the absolute truth then according to baladev vidya bhushana's commentary on vishnu sahasranama he says that atmavan also means that he maintains a very very loving relationship with the liberated souls now this is important for leaders that they need to keep association or we need to keep association with saintly persons and not just a casual acquaintance but actually a very deep loving relationship where there is freedom to uh, guide and train uh, and coach uh, leaders finally duty man is effulgent now we might say that all leaders are effulgent only they carry an aura and the the aura that ramachandra carries and portrays is not just aura but is actually visible therefore when the first time hanuman meets him hanuman is disguised as a sanyasi and wants to find out who ramachandra and lakshmana are without revealing his own identity are they spies of vali why are they there are they planning on attacking sugriva it's not clear but yet hanuman who is so powerful and expert when he approaches sri ramachandra and asks two or three questions he is 
unable to hold his own disguise that he reveals his form as hanuman even without ramachandra uttering a word to lakshmana that is his effulgence the, the power of his what we say duty duty man that means their their presence is so big and so powerful and charismatic that people cannot approach them with some sort of secrecy or duplicity moving to service um kritagya ramachandra is very very grateful uh now what is the the quality of gratitude and it is de- described that shri ramachandra in the very first section of ram and when dasharath maharaj asks his assembly and his citizens why do you want why do you think that ramachandra is fit to be the king uh, please tell me they don't hesitate in saying atanchit upakarena kriten ekain pushyati na smaratye apakaranam shatam api atmavattaya this ramachandra is such a personality that uh, he becomes very grateful if someone does or offers one favor to him kritena ekena tushyati he becomes very happy now there is a flip side to gratitude and that flip side is na smarati apakaranam shatam api even if one does hundreds of disfavors to him he doesn't remember them hmm? but a small act of service or a small act of favor he will not forget it he will remember it very much and become very happy it's a great quality to have then uh, there is another verse uh, this is from the um kishkindha kanda i'm sorry this is in the uh, arne uh, yuddha sundara kanda i'm so sorry sundara kanda i'm conscious of time suddenly in sundara kanda there is a story which i think i should narrate quickly sita devi narrates a very private and confidential event that nobody knows except she and he ramachandra and she has to narrate this to hanuman so that when he goes back to ramachandra and ramachandra will ask him did you meet sita and how do i know that it is her and not someone else he has to narrate this story and this story is from while they were in the forest one day shri ramachandra was lying down on the lap of sita devi and taking a nap in the afternoon they were sitting under the shade of a very beautiful tree indra sun takes the form of a crow because he is captivated by sita's beauty and in a very quick almost annoying way comes and pecks at her breasts and little drops of blood fall on ramachandra's face so when ramachandra wakes up and he asks sita devi what happened he sees the blood and turns his eyes to this crow that is there and he knows because the beak is blood stained immediately he pick, he picks a blade of grass like lord balaram did picks a blade of grass and empowers it to become like a brahmastra and leaves it uh, on the crow now the crow because he is the son of indra runs or flies to indra seeking shelter and indra says that is ramachandra's arrow i have no way of protecting you from it i'm sorry this is like durva samuni being chased by the sudarshan chakra so then that bird sometimes he is referred to as jayanta but it is not jayanta actually it's another son of indra so that he goes to lord brahma lord shiva all the ashwini kumaras the upadevatas the gandharva siddhas charanas all throughout the universe and they all say sorry ramachandra's arrow we cannot uh, stop it so he comes back 
and falls at the feet of Sita Devi. And Sita Devi turns to Ramachandra and asks him to forgive him. Now the question might be, why should it take so long for Ramachandra's arrow to kill a petty crow? And the answer is in the verse um, here, where in, in Sundara Kanda, the scene is described by Valmiki as Satam Nipatita Bhumau. This crow had fallen on the ground by the feet of Sita Devi. Sharanya Sharanagataha. He's saying, please, I seek your shelter. I seek your shelter, Sita Devi. Vadarham api kakutha kripaya paryapalataha. Although he is fit to be killed for violating Sita Devi, Ramachandra lets him go. And the name used for Ramachandra there is kakutha. He could have said dasartha, dasarthi, he could have said anything, but he used the word kakutha. And in that word is the secret that many generations ago, one of the uh, uh, ancestors of Sri Ramachandra was invited by Indra to fight on the beha on behalf of the demigods. And when this war was happening, that king, the ancestor, his chariot was smashed. But the fighting was continuing to help that king, Indra took the form of a bull and invited the king to be seated or situated on that bull, on the hump of the bull and continue fighting. So the hump in Sanskrit is called kaku. And because this king was situated on that hump, his name was Kakutstha. And because Ramachandra is a descendant of that king, his name is Pakutstha. Now remember, Indra is the bull. And this crow is the son of Indra. So by using the word Kakutstha, Valmiki is telling us how grateful Ramachandra is that because Indra served his ancestor, Today, Ramachandra will not kill the crow and just give him a little uh, heat. I did not kill him. Although, Vadarhamati is fit to be killed. He forgave him. This is his sense of gratitude. Then, Sarva Bhuteshu Kohitaha. He is the one who benefits all living entities. Uh, Deva Madhava Prabhu, I think I'm running out of time. And I had told Samasaki. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to get through these wonderful qualities. What do you suggest we do? Oh, sorry, I was muted. I think we have a steady audience, and they would be happy if you continued, as I would. There's nothing okay. else today, so what better thing to do than hear the glories of Lord Ram from somebody? I, sh I would like to mention now that all the, the beautiful darshan that we're getting, these deities that we're seeing in Prabhu's slides are his own uh, deities at home, who they, I believe you installed them last year, Prabhu, or the year before? A year before. Yeah, so it, it, we can all feel the heartfelt expression that you have for Lord Ram, Mother Sita, Lakshman, and Hanuman. So we would be happy to continue seeing them and you. So the the next quality is uh, Sarva Bhuteshu Kohitaha. Uh, Hita means one who benefits all living beings. Now, Ramachandra is a personality who is glorified as Vyasaneshu Manushyanam Bhrusham Bhavati Dukhitaha Utsaveshu Cha Sarveshu Piteva Paritushyati. His sense of empathy and uh, belonging to the people that he is part of or he is the leader of the verse is Vesaneshu Manushyanam when his people, uh, or for that matter, any person is feeling uh, or, or um, experiencing some difficulty, Vesaneshu, some very terrible, calamitous, or very, some sort of hardship. For Ramachandra, he says, Bhrusham Bhavati Dukkita. Ramachandra becomes even more 
uh, or even sadder than the person experiencing the difficulty feels for them and on the other hand if someone is celebrating something then he says utsaveshu cha sarveshu if someone is celebrating some uh, good thing in their life then like a very kind father he also celebrates piteva paritushyati he becomes happy and celebratory like a proud father or a caring father now ramachandra has benefited all sorts of living entities of course as i said sages then he has benefited the rakshasa tataka maricha subahu by liberating them from their rakshasa existence the sages in dantakaranya jatayu such a uh, mode of ignorance bird if you will prabhupad would often say or as an example that the vulture has great eyesight it flies about a couple of miles up in the sky but has such sharp and keen eyesight that it can trace a dead body and he would say what's the use of having such great gifts if they're not utilized properly so having great eyesight but looking for dead bodies what's the point so vulture is generally considered a in our iskon parlance a muchi bird because it feeds on dead bodies but ramachandra embraced jatayu and said to sita and lakshmana actually jatayu is more to me than you and sita i'm i, I if i have to give someone up i would rather give you up than jatayu in fact this is his feeling for jatayu when jatayu actually failed in his service he could not protect sita from ravana so for a person who has failed in their service if that's the kind of feelings and benefit ramachandra can give then what to speak for someone who actually is successful in his service like hanuman ji next there is so much more and he met virada kabanda all of them vibhishana in fact he wants to benefit even ravana ramachandra says i have no animosity with ravana if he simply brings sita back and says please forgive me today i will forgive him completely and in fact make his kingdom even better then he valmiki asks prasch eka priya darshana i have you included the word eka it means exclusively pleasing to look at there is nobody as pleasing to look at sri ramachandra for example when ramachandra entered dandakaranya forest thousands and thousands and thousands of sages rushed to meet him and when they came up close to him they were all frozen the word in sanskrit is stambha they became captivated and the captivation was that different sages had glanced cast their eyes on different body parts of sri ramachandra some group of sages saw his nails some were fixed on his wrist some on his arm some on his shoulder some on his neck some on his ears eyes nose lips his chest his navel his hips his thighs knees feet uh, the toes the nails of his toes every feature was so perfectly formed and in its right place in the right proportion that the sages became completely enthralled that their eyes did not move from that body part to any other body part they were continuously drinking the form of lord ramachandra even if it is one tiny body part that they were uh, they were enthralled by now that's now one might say do all leaders have to be good looking so uh, ugly people cannot be leaders so the idea of priya darshana although he is externally beautiful the priya darshana feature is that the mind the uh, the face is the index of the mind a person who is dealing with something if they are preoccupied then that particular thought manifests on their forehead or on their face so if they are worried you can see it if they are 
anxious or fearful, you can see it. If they are uh, nervous, you can see it. But Ramachandra, because internally all these feelings don't exist for him, fear, worry, anxiety, all of that, it never appears on his face. So regardless, whenever, whoever approaches Ramachandra, you will find him always in that pleasing condition because his own heart or mind never moves from the place of full bliss. And that is why he's called Rama. Another meaning of the word Priyadarshana means whoever comes in front of Ramachandra, uh, whether they are a sage or a rakshasa, a bird or an animal or an insect, he will look at them pleasingly. Priyadarshana, a great quality for a leader to not be either predisposed or prejudiced about anybody that they're going to meet with. Then Jitakrodha, one who has conquered anger. Technically, Jitakrodha does not mean that they cannot get angry. It just means that they know when to curb their anger and when to use it for a purpose. Generally, anger, as we know from Bhagavad Gita, comes from unfulfilled expectations. Ramachandra has no expectations from anybody. So there is nothing to be unfulfilled. So there is no anger. He only gets angry, which we're going to see later, when he sees the devotees in distress or being put in distress by someone. Anasuyakaha, free of envy. Actually, in uh, non envious or free of envy means Ramachandra does not desire anything that belongs to someone else at all. He doesn't covet anyone's possession. In fact, even his own possession, he does not covet. When the greatest kingdom was being offered to him, he had a smile on his face. And in a moment's situation, without any notice, that entire kingdom was taken away, not just taken away, he was banished to the forest for 14 years. That smile did not go away from his face. When he came out of Dasaratha's palace, all the citizens who were there could not tell from Ramachandra's countenance that he was being banished. When he went to Kausalya's chambers, she invited him, made a wonderful seat for him to sit on and eat, and she could not know that what had happened in Dasaratha's palace. Even Sita Devi, when he came to her chamber, could not know what had just transpired because on his face, so he has nothing to be envious of. Even a great kingdom, he will leave at the drop of a fair hat. In Bhagavatam, there's a beautiful verse, the great kingdom that is, that is even coveted by the demigods, he just left it as if it has no value. Another meaning of Anasuyaka is he is so great that no one can be envious of him either. For example, in terms of giving light, let's say I have a strong flashlight. Uh, I cannot be envious of the sun because I, I don't have anything that's comparable. It's very, uh, it doesn't even match. So that he's so up there that one cannot be envious of him. Moving on to his abilities, uh, Viryavan. Viryavan means all powerful. So there are many, many fascinating stories. The war with Ravana, of course, the war with or a fight with Karadushana, Trisha, and 14,000 of their demons. It is said that Ramachandra took on his bow and arrow and did not retreat even one step in the fight. All he did is put his foot one foot back to, to gain traction and fought 14,000 powerful demons who attacked him all together in 72 minutes and finished him without stepping back or retreating even once. In fact, the 14,000 demons could see Ramachandra standing there. They could see his bow, but they could not see 
how he was pulling out his arrows from his quiver because they were coming out so fast. His hand was moving so fast that they could not figure out how he could be so uh, so skilled. And finally, uh, Virya is his ability to break Lord Shiva's bow because Dasaratha had, uh, sorry, Janaka had challenged when, when he saw all the people who were assembled there and they saw this bow of Lord Shiva, he asked, Nirviryam Urvitale? Is there no uh, powerful man on the surface of this planet? That was a challenge. So Ramachandra picked up that bow as if an elephant picks up a mushroom and completely broke it. Then Dridhavrata, firm in his vow. Uh, Ramachandra says that once I give my word, whatever happens, I will never move from that word. It also means once he is determined, he cannot be, uh, his mind cannot be changed. So when he decided that he has to go to the forest, so many people tried so many different things, but he could not change his resolve. Then there is a Vrata. Ramachandra says in uh, Yuddha Kanda, even if one comes to my lotus feet and just once says, I am yours. Sakradeva Prapannaya Tava Asmi Iti Achate. Tava Asmi, I am yours, Ramachandra. If he says it even once, Abhayam, I give them fearlessness. Etad Mama Vratam. Etad Vratam Mama. This is my vow. And that is why people are always attracted to Ramachandra because he always makes good of his vow. And internally, there is no weakness of heart for Ramachandra. And because there is no weakness of heart, he never moves or gives up his vow. Charitra na chiko yukta. Charitra, charitra means character or personality and charitra means following Vedic customs. He is very, very thorough in following Vedic customs. Even in the forest, he followed all the proper rituals, did his Gayatri, uh, offered oblations to the uh, superior authorities and followed his guru very, very devotedly. Because we understand that the guru is uh, sometimes considered higher than the Supreme Lord. Uh, in terms of their uh, or our importance or their importance in our life. When the great prince Rama and other prince Lakshmana were invited by Vishwamitra, Vishwamitra walked through the forest and Ramachandra and Lakshmana very, very devotedly, obediently, gently followed Vishwamitra for 12 miles without asking a question, without uttering a word, without Vishwamitra even looking back or even saying, oh, you're great princes, I'm happy you've come along, nothing. He looked forward and kept walking. And these two just walked behind him humbly. And that is when Vishwamitra recognizes that they are so exquisitely cultured that they're following their guru without any sense of ego or any haughty, I'm a prince after all, nothing. And then the word samartha. Samartha means skillful or able. He can execute anything. Uh, when uh, Sugriva narrated Vali's strength to Sri Ramachandra, Ramachandra said, no problem. I can fight Vali. But Sugriva said, uh, Ramachandra, I need a little demonstration. Can you show me? that you have capacity similar to Vali because Vali is very powerful. So Ramachandra saw the skeleton of Dundubhi was this mighty buffalo that was killed by Vali. So Ramachandra walked up to that skeleton and with his uh, toe, big toe, flicked that skeleton and it went and fell 80 miles away and asked Sugriva, what do you think? So Griva, unfortunately, uh, at that moment said, you know, the skeleton is dry. I know the buffalo is very, very powerful when flesh and all of his muscle was all there, 
uh, and Wali had killed it. But now skeleton, skeleton's lighter, significantly lighter. Can you can you demonstrate something else for me? Then Ramachandra released an arrow that pierced through seven sal trees. Sal trees are very very hard woods. Seven sal trees entered the earth, circumambulated Patala Loka, and came back to his quiver. And that's when Sugriva said, yeah, yes, I agree. And Ramachandra demonstrated by building a bridge of stone on an ocean. And it's not just uh, if structural engineers can appreciate it. Generally, you have to look at weight, how much weight the bridge has to carry. And the numbers given for the monkey army is numbers that we, we don't even have, uh, I can't even explain. They start with uh, millions of billions and then keep going from there. And that bridge is able to hold. And uh, finally, Kasya Bibhati Devascha Jata Roshascha Samyuge, even the demigods are afraid. And he says, Devascha, he means demigods and Gandharvas, Charanas, Rakshasas are also afraid. Or Ramachandra, if he were to glare at somebody, when he wanted to cross Samudra, he asked, he, he fasted for three days, seeking Samudra's uh, permission to give them way. Samudra did not come. Ramachandra glared at the ocean. And in an instant, the entire water started boiling. Generally, to boil salt water takes longer. And it and to what to speak of boiling an ocean, the entire ocean started boiling to such a degree that the fish, the sharks, and the whales started to uh, burn. And that's when Samudra Dev came out and said, "I'm so sorry. I misunderstood who you are and what your abilities are, and I don't want to uh, incite your wrath." Um, another example is when Ravana is recruiting Maricha to do the dirty work of uh, distracting Ramachandra so that he can kidnap Sita Devi, Maricha tells him, you're a fool. Don't even try. Because if you try something like this, it's only going to end up in your death. Of course, my death. So he says, Kimudyamam vyartham imam kritvate rakshasadhipa udyamam vyartham it's a waste of effort. Don't do it. Why? He says, Dushta Chetotam Rane Tan Tataha Antam Tava Jeevitam. Not only uh, will you die in a battle, but just by Ramachandra looking at you angrily, you will be finished. Forget about fighting. Huh? He says, Drushta Chetatvam. He just has to look at you. And you'll be done. So don't, don't. Don't uh, mess with Ramachandra. But Ravana insists. So then uh, uh, Maricha tells him, Rakaradini Namani Ramatrasta Ravana Ratnani Charathas Cheva Tarasam Sanjayan uh, Sanjayantime. He says, You know, I've been hit by Ramachandra twice. Okay, third time, you know, maybe three strikes. But after being hit by Ramachandra first time and second time, I have become a monk in the forest because I don't want to ever be somewhere in the neighborhood of Ramachandra. In fact, I am now so afraid of Rama that any word that begins with Ra gives me uh, you know, the, the fear that I literally, my, my heart comes into my throat. Uh, then he gives the example. If someone says, Ratna, because the word starts with Ra, I shiver, or Ratha, I shiver. In fact, even your name, Ravana, when I'm to say Ravana, because it starts with Ra, I'm afraid, not because of you, because the name of Ramachandra also begins with Ra. I don't want to mess with him. So with that, these are the 16 qualities of a leader that are necessary and need to be utilized from different different occasions so that not only are they who give glory to the position, not the position giving glory to them, 
but can lead their followers and themselves upward not backward or even forward forward is better than anything something is better than nothing but ideally leading the followers upward so with that i want to pause i'm sorry i went uh, longer than i wanted to uh, and let's see if there are some comments concerns objections questions whatever you'd like me to serve you as thank you prabhu that was wonderful um and the comments that i could see were just keep going <laughs> <laughs> the devotees were excited that you stuck around a few more minutes with us um i i'll take advantage of my position to be able to um, put a question to you as, as i was hearing your beautiful narrations of lord ram's qualities i was simultaneously also noticing the lack of those qualities in myself and maybe some other devotees were also hearing these things and feeling uh, a little discouraged that we're falling short of this mark um so it, in hearing the qualities of lord ram to what degree are we expected to live up to that ourselves sometimes we hear that we don't imitate the lord uh and so to what degree in hearing these qualities should we be aspiring for them ourselves and if we should be then how to develop them thank you wonderful question so first of all the reason the supreme lord shri ramachandra establishes such a high standard because it serves three purposes which in your question is there one we get to know what is real leadership or what are the qualities we, he sets that standard so we can know what is genuine and separate that which is not genuine from it so that's the first second it gives a very good understanding in general of where i am at hmm. and third it is meant to inspire me to move to that standard now he is called vibhu we are anu obviously we cannot imitate uh, shri ramachandra we can emulate his lifestyle we can emulate his character and within the small circle of influence that we have uh, we can live these qualities i mm. mean it's a challenge even even in a small ring it's a challenge who am i to say it but it's inspiring to know that oh if i need or if i want to cultivate these qualities if i want to feel the warmth of something i move closer to the fire right similarly if i want to feel empowered by these qualities i move closer to shri ramachandra so that sometimes as vaisheshika prabhu says even a mustard seed worth of it comes to me my life is filled with it mm. Mm. that's that's hopeful thank you <laughs> hopeful and helpful um a bit of a technical question um how did the name sundarakan come about when varad krishna is asking uh he i'm sure he knows too there are nine reasons why the name sundara kanda comes in hmm. uh, i don't think we have the time to get into the nine reasons but i can just say there are nine reasons hmm. uh, well, there sir. is a folklore okay i'll give you some there is one folklore uh, story that uh, all the other kandas are named according to the place or the situation hmm. except sundara kanda is sort of this outlier and uh, actually sundara refers to hanuman in that case but when hanuman comes to uh, valmiki and tells him don't include my name this is this is definitely folklore don't include my name uh, because you know kinda it should not say hanuman kanda or anything like that valmiki says okay okay i'll call it sundara kanda it's mm. beautiful yeah, yeah, sure sure then hanuman goes home to see his mother apparently and when he enters the house his mother says oh sundara welcome in he said why did you call me sundara she said that's the name i've always called you in your childhood so by the time hanuman rushes back to valmiki saying no 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 sundara kanda is not a name you should put me says what well, too late mm. that's sort of the folklore of it however there are other reasons in mm. that kanda there is uh, the poetry is very beautiful the emotions are very beautiful 
the descriptions are very beautiful ravan lanka is very beautiful hanuman although vanara he himself is very beautiful in his service because service makes a person beautiful mm. it's ramachandra's pining for sita devi which although should bring tears to the heart is actually very beautiful in terms mm. of the ecstasy sita devi is pining in separation that is also very beautiful mm. and finally you know so these are all the different different reasons why it gets the name sundara kanda the beauty of service the beauty of separation also mm. thank you for that beautiful explanation and question for people like me who are not as aware of the glories <laughs> of lord ram and the ramayan as you fortunate devotees okay thank you so much nitinanda pran prabhu this was such a wonderful session um a steady and increasing audience over the entire session which as somebody who's done a lot of interviews on the page i can say is not always the case <laughs> but we only had a growing audience and i myself was um feeling very grateful to have the good excuse to sit and hear the whole time from you um having again your neighbor in devotional service over here in michigan um i always saw the chicago community under your care as the kind of gold standard for what is possible in the iskon congregation world um although many uh householders living outside they were very active at the temple there was a lively Brahm brahmacharya ashram at the same time gorgeous deity worship excellent prashad <laughs> it was dangerous to go downstairs at 1 p.m. <laughs> in chicago temple you wouldn't come back up uh, out of your coma until 4 or 5 in the afternoon uh so very appropriate to hear from you the glories of lord ram as a leader and maybe perhaps for me personally most um indicative of your own leadership is your son prahlad and how how settled he is in in his own krishna consciousness and as a young person which is not an easy thing to do in 2021 and yet he's very settled in himself and also confident in being able to do something for prabhupad's mission and desiring to do that also which is a very special thing and says a lot about you as a parent which is the most important leadership position in many ways so thank you for glorifying lord ram in such a wonderful and extensive way for us today and we hope to have you back on the page again soon i would love to come back uh, but thank you very much and thank you for your kind words uh, as far as prahlad is concerned yes mom and dad have definitely contributed no no doubt but your contribution and your the community that you have there uh can we cannot be ignored picking the ripe fruit <laughs> <laughs> no i didn't know that much <laughs> when the fruit looks sweet i know where to go get it <laughs> <laughs> thank you though thank you professor I, i wish i wish you and everyone a very very fascinating joyful inspiring shri ram and navmi jai a wonderful blessing and again encouraging the devotees to keep an eye on the spt page we're always looking to bring devotees like his grace nitinanda pran prabhu on to glorify the lord and enliven us all in our service so please keep an eye out and we look forward to having you back again soon shri prabhupad ki jai jai ram chandra bhagavan ki jai ki jai